Morning YouTube, this is Chuck Jones with CNS Mining and Manufacturing in Arizona. I'm um, up here in the Bradshaws, it was like 36 degrees when I left the house and now it's 51 up here so I think it's going to be a pretty nice day. And the purpose of this video is going to be uh, just basic metal detecting uh, tips and uh, just to show what you need to do to actually find some gold and uh, we'll just get the detector out and begin uh, the so video here. A few here things a yeah, you need to have with you if you're going to go out metal detecting and, and be successful. Uh, let's start from the left to right here. I've got a nail pouch that you can put all, all your tools in. You can put your trash in that you pick up. Uh, a lot of things like that. Uh, I keep a couple uh, poker chips in there with a nugget glued to them so I can, I can uh, test my detector and make sure it's working right. Um, next is a small vial, well, this is a five ounce vial, to put your gold in. Uh, ignore that noise in the background, that's a greater grade in the road. Take your manual with you, pre-read it, make sure you know what you're doing with your detector, but bring it with you in case you forget. Uh, next is a good pair of gloves. I can get them at Home Depot or anywhere, and those are really good to keep your hands from getting cut while you're digging in the dirt. Always, always, always bring an extra battery. There's nothing worse to get out and do five minutes of detecting and your battery is dead in your detector. Bring one with you. Uh, next I have a hammer loop. This isn't a necessity, but I use it because I carry a, a pick with me also. And that pick is to uh, obviously dig in the dirt, but uh, it's a good place to carry it because it doesn't fit in the pouch. Um, next I've got a scoop. Uh, this plastic scoop is good for if you're not using your hand to pick up the dirt, you can take and uh, use this scoop and it won't get detected by the uh, metal detector. Next is, this is a bent screwdriver, I hope you can see it there. Um, what I use that for is if I'm working bedrock I can uh, get down in the cracks and, and pick out with that uh, tool. And last but not least is my pick. Uh, it's, it was just a garden pick but I put a square handle on it and uh, also have a really powerful magnet on the end of the blade. So if there's any metal in there that's going to give me a target, I can, if it's iron or steel, I can get it and get it out of there. Alright guys, a couple things here. You want to adjust your detector so when your coil's flat on the ground like it is, uh, that you're not bent over. I don't know, you probably can't see it here, I'm too far away, but uh, you, know, you just don't want to be bent over while you're detecting like this. You know, you want to be straight up and down as you can get. If you're bent over, you're, not, you're going to lose your detecting time because you just won't be able to do it. The other uh, good tip is, is make sure your, <coughs> your coil wire here is wound tight so you don't get false signals off it. Um, next, when you swing a, uh, your metal detector, don't do this I see too many people doing this. They're, number one, they're not low enough and they're kicking up on the end. When you swing your detector, keep it low and flat so you just barely clip on the, ga at the gla uh, grass. Keep it low and flat and slow. And the key word, and you might have heard it a hundred times, is low and slow. And that's true, low and slow. Keep that detector going low and slow. And the other is, is speed of travel. You want to cover as much ground as you can, and usually they figure three to four feet in width of your of your coil swing, and that, that that's pretty good. Uh, and make sure you don't kick up on the end; just keep it flat all the way. But don't overstep and go too far, and now you've missed a foot and a half of area here. When you swing, you want you try to do like a half a coil of overlap. So that, what that'll do, it'll slow you down, number one. And number two, it's going to give you a much bigger chance of not missing uh, a nugget or a coin or whatever you happen to be hunting. 
this again low and slow and overlap. Now usually what we do if we're out on a an area and you do get a hit and maybe you found um, say you found a nugget uh, to do that a whole area you want to do a space that's probably four feet like four feet wide and maybe ten feet long and cover every inch of that really slow and you can go through it and do that and then uh, you can go wider than that another four feet on on the other side or you can go longer do another ten, uh, ten foot section and just keep moving like that but you want to move slowly through that whole area there's, there's no sense in being in a hurry to, to find the, your targets, whether it's a relic or a coin or a nugget, it doesn't matter. You want to take your time to do this. Um, well, if you enjoyed this video, and uh, it's going to be some use to you, I hope, uh, give me a thumbs up uh, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.